Cool. Uh, let's uh, head on over to the second part of what I want to talk about is what happens when unions betray the working class, because that happens as well. Um, and this is not all unions. There are specific unions that I'm going to bring up here. Right. And these are unions that side with a corporation um, or they take a political side. They, they become representatives of a political party, which is not the point of a union, by the way. Unions are not supposed to side with uh, a political party. They're not supposed to side with a corporation. Um, so you have unions like the American Federation of Teachers, right? The president of the AFT is Randy Weingarten. Now, Randy Weingarten also sits on the board of the DNC, which means she is directly connected with the Democratic Party. So all, all the American Feder uh, unions like the American Federation of Teachers and even the AFL-CIO are doing is trying to funnel more working class people into the Democratic Party, right? It's one of the critiques that people have of, of organizations like the DSA as well. Um, you know, the DSA, is it just, are they, are they on the side of the working class? Are they, are they actual socialists? Are they, uh, uh, you know, trying to um, bridge this income gap? Uh, or are they just trying to funnel people into the Democratic Party by supporting these progressives that get in there and then end up voting for Nancy Pelosi anyway? Um, you know, so, so, and that's the same complaint that people have with the American Federation of Teachers. And, you can see that, right? Like the Democratic Party is objectively failing workers. They are responsible for some of the worst uh, anti-worker laws out there. They gave rise to right to work states and right to work laws. Um, they actively speak out against strikes. They actively speak out against direct action, and they put all of their uh, uh, all of their energy into electoralism. So the unions really become this proxy to get people into the Democratic Party and vote for Democratic candidates who are not going to fucking help the working class. Uh, and you can kind of see it the in, in the way that Randy Weingarten talked about schools. Uh, sites like Left Voice and so, uh, World Socialist website have addressed this sort of stuff. Under Trump, I remember uh, you know reading these stories back in August. Under Trump, Trump wanted to reopen schools in August, right? He wanted to get the schools in-person learning again and everything. So the AFT wrote this big long thing, something I think the CDC should have done. Wrote this big long thing about how and why. Uh, you know, schools should and can be uh, reopened, right? Uh, they they uh, put out this fucking, uh, like, packet or whatever about, about this topic. And under Trump, they said schools should not be in person. We just, we just don't have uh, the necessary safety uh, protocols put in place to reopen schools in public. So we should, we should have been spending this time talking about how to, how to make virtual learning a little bit easier and, and so on and so forth. Right. And that was under Trump. Now under Biden, Biden's talking about reopening schools in person too. And Randy Weingarten and even Dr. Fauci, again, a politicized position. And again, science should not be politicized. Science should have no political affiliations at all. It should be uh, much like unions should be representative of the people. But under Biden's, uh, Randy Weingarten, who's sitting on the on the board of the DNC, is saying, "Oh, science be damned! Schools should be open. It's better now. It's better to to reopen schools." But this was at a point where cases weren't going down. People hadn't been vaccinated. There was uh, major uh, logistical problems with the vaccinations, right? Like, and and there was a lot of community spread linked directly to schools being open because they did this hybrid thing. Where one week the school is open, one week the school is not. What two weeks of uh, virtual learning, one week of in-person learning, three weeks of virtual learning, to four weeks of in-person learning, and it was, um, it was affecting students. It was affecting teachers. They weren't able to do their jobs effectively. And but under Biden, it was fine because she's a representative of the DNC, so she's going to go with what the Democrats want her to do. So when the teachers pushed back. The American Federation of Teachers and all of their little subsidiaries, you know, like the Chicago Teachers Union, the Washington Teachers Union, the Seattle Teachers Union, so on and so forth, 
were in line with what the AFT was saying and what the Democratic Party was saying. And when the teachers decided to go on strike, they discouraged a strike. They said, no, we're not going to approve a strike. But the rank and file did it anyway. Um, she's also come out and said, uh, we shouldn't be encouraging people uh, to organize general strikes. We should be encouraging people to take uh, take this to the courts, which is kind of a moot point. It's not the right way to do anything. Uh, because here's the thing. It, let's say you have a worker dispute. Let's say a corporation... Uh, like Amazon is mistreating its workers, and a bunch of these workers decide to file a suit. In a lot of these cases, the courts are going to wind up taking the side of the corporation because the courts themselves are bought and sold. Our justice system doesn't serve the working class. Our justice system essentially serves the oligarchy. How many killer cops have actually fucking been prosecuted? Three in the last five years. That's a minuscule amount of cops that have been prosecuted. How many corporations have actually gotten detrimental punishment for torturing the working class? Almost none. Now, these legal battles are expensive, right? Like lawyers can't work for free. So what's Randy Wire? A, a president of a union is saying, oh, yeah, it, you should you should get involved in this very expensive process. And if you can't afford one, I'm sure there's a lawyer that'll do it for pro bono. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's what the lawyers are looking for, pro bono cases, so they can't feed their families either. So now the, the workers can't feed their families, the lawyers can't feed their families. A lot of holds in somebody that's supposed to be, you know, in the, in the tactics of somebody that's supposed to be representing the working class. Not just that, but th it's a lengthy process. So now your you know your your life is 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 just tied into a bunch of fucking lawsuits. Is that what you want? Is that the most productive use of your time? And you know these corporations can afford more lawyers than the average working class. So again, this is discouraging direct action, which is what the Democratic Party wants. They don't want direct action. They don't support protests. The first thing, but when when the, before the Chauvin verdict was going to come out, the first thing Joe Biden did was condemn riots, immediately equating any sort of protest or a, or, or direct action against police brutality as 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 riots and as as violence. That's been the rhetoric of the Democratic Party this entire time. They equate direct action with violence. Because to them, it's the same thing. There's no difference in it. And a, a, a union like the American Federation of Teachers, where the president is sitting on the board of the DNC, which should not be allowed, is going to, to reflect that same thing. And it keeps going, right? Like the AFL, for example, uh, if you guys remember, this is, this is a, the, the video that got my uh, channel on YouTube, uh, Two Strikes. Uh, but I'm going to bring it up anyway because fuck your censorship, YouTube. Uh, Time Magazine wrote an article where they talked about the shadow campaign to get Biden elected. And uh, in that article, they specifically said that there was an advisor to the president of the AFL-CIO that got people together in order to get Biden elected. So they basically did the same thing that Robert Mercer did for, for Donald Trump. Uh, for Joe Biden. So it's, this is the Demo Democratic Party version of Cambridge Analytica, where they used uh, targeted ads, they used psychographics, um, they manipulated people's uh, expectations, they talked about how secure mail-in voting is, even though that mail-in voting has its problems, um, and, they talk, and, and they ignored issues of election integrity, and so on and so forth, um, to get Biden elected, right? And 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 basically what the Time Magazine article was doing was legitimizing election interference, legitimizing election manipulation, legitimizing targeted ads and psychographics, um, and, uh, you know, preying on people's emotions and so on and so forth. So they basically used Trump derangement syndrome and fear mongering to get people to vote for Joe Biden. Um, and it, and, it, and Time Magazine's goal was to legitimize that, right? And, and YouTube gave me two strikes because I read the article and I pointed out where they said collusion and conspiracy and all that kind of shit. But the AFL-CIO notoriously 
betrayed the working class because all they did was use this to to you know use this in quote grassroots organizations to funnel people into the democratic party uh, which is not what a union is supposed to do. Again, the union is supposed to be a representative of the working class to ensure that they have a spot at the negotiating table to make sure that workers' rights aren't being infringed upon. Uh, the Democratic Party has never supported those kinds of things. So a union supporting the Democratic Party is basically a betrayal of the working class. Uh, and the AFL has been notoriously racist. In the early 1900s, they pushed back against the international workers of the world who were for a unified working class, regardless of gender, race, religious orientation, sexual orientation, and so on and so forth. But the AFL only wanted to represent white male tradesmen, and that's it. And they rejected black tradesmen, male or female. They rejected brown tradesmen, male or female. They didn't care for any of them. So a historically racist union supports Joe Biden, a historically racist pol politician, kind of makes sense a little bit. But the AFL is not, the AFL-CIO is not a union that is on the side of the worker. And that was also a concern in, in Bessemer, Alabama, right? It was a big concern because the the union that they were going to join uh, has, has also had a history where they side with the corporation over the working class uh, many different times. So what's the solution here, right? What what happens when the union starts betraying the working class? Uh, well, uh, it, you form rank and file committees, uh, like the rank and file safety committees. Uh, the, the teachers that were betrayed by their unions form these safety committees. Uh, both Left Voice and World, World Socialist website has talked about uh, organizing uh, rank and file safety committees, and they encourage the uh, folks at Bessemer, Alabama, to also start doing that. E even if the un the um, vote for unionization fails, which it unfortunately did because of the background fuckery that happened uh, within Amazon, they said form these rank and file safety committees. That's what's going to be beneficial for you guys. Um, and you know, I think my understanding is that they did. I think that they uh, that they were starting to look into to forming those rank and file safety committees, uh, and and I hope that's kind of the future of it, because because that is one of the things that that the working class can do, and it also like the the safety committees are built in a way where it doesn't seem like there's there is a central leadership, like there doesn't seem to be a president that can also sit on the board of of the DNC, right? It's it's more of uh, it, let's take a little bit more of a democratic approach to unionization and the workplace, uh, leaning a little bit more towards like the worker co-op model. And even the, but the rank and file is, is where the, the, the power of unions, the power of the labor movement, the power of organized labor really is. Uh, even the Black Panther said that, right? Like Bobby Seale and Fred Hampton would, would keep saying like, no, the, the Panthers, aren't guided by me they're they're really guided by and strengthened by the rank and file the people doing the fucking work i'm just sort of this proxy to them um you know so i'm a mascot to them is is sort of the way that they would describe it the rank and file was 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 always what people saw as the powerhouse behind any sort of uh organized labor or socialist movement so that's why that's why the rank and file safety committees are so important. Um, not just that, but the other thing I think we need to to realize too is things like the police union um, are also very similar to the AFL CIO and the American Federation of Teachers, where they are not really working class unions, and they'll never be working class unions specifically because of what the police is um the the police though they should be on the side of the working class are not because the police are the are, are the are the protectors of rich people's stuff that's what they've always been they have a the the reason why the cops were started is because of slave patrols uh that's that's the origin of american policing and and, and you remember the slaves were not considered people they were considered property uh, and uh, the, the cops would often uh, attack 
uh, striking workers in tandem with corporate mercenaries like the Pinkertons. And the only police strike we've ever seen in the country is in Boston. Um, and that went so poorly, and I've done a couple of videos on the Boston police strike, so I'm not going to go into the full details of that. Um, but basically, like, that went so poorly, and the cops lost their jobs, they lost their livelihoods, um, you know, uh, veterans were given uh, a better pay, better positions. Like, basically, they, 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 gave, they fired all the cops that went on strike, and then whoever they hired to replace these cops, they basically gave them what the striking cops were asking for. Better pay, better working conditions, better, uh, better hours. Um, you know, so that they had a little bit more freedom in being police officers. They gave that to the replacements, which means that it was never really about the money. It was never really about the working conditions. It was just about control. And they and they won. And now the cops are controlled by the oligarchs and by the leadership. And the police union is is basically a representation of that. They'll never be on our side. And that's why you see actual working class people, rank and file, that push back against the police unions. Like in several cities, Minneapolis, Pittsburgh, where I live, uh, Ohio, like all of these different cities that saw police violence, that saw uh, police uh, trying to arrest activists and protesters, uh, they needed to cart them off to jail and they were going to use public transportation. And the driver said, nope. Sorry, that's not what we're going to do. We stand with these folks. Uh, and also, it's not our job. We're not a paddy wagon. We're public transportation. We're here to serve the people, which is what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, and you're fucking not because you're arresting people for uh, committing no crimes. And the the transportation union supported that shit. So, you know... The actual rank and file is pushing back against corporate um, corporate unions, the quote business unions that don't side with the worker and side more with political parties than they do. Uh, and and I want to also say, like, you know, again, the Democrats are not the champions of the working class. Anybody that says that has been propagandized and they are historically wrong. They are objectively wrong. There is there the, you there there's almost no argument that can be made that the that the Democratic Party has been in support of the working class. In fact, the Democratic Party has actually been on the side of businesses forever. They were the pro-business party of the 1800s, and they've been the pro-business party of the uh, 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 of of business since the 1800s. That's why the Republican Party became as corporate as it was because William McKinley needed to beat the Democrat who was in the pockets of big industry. So he decided to cater to big industry. And the Republican Party went from a populist and socialist party that was anti slavery, pro abolition, would go to bat for black people. They were actually a number of black Republicans in Congress in 1872 to the racist crazy fascistic party that we see today so the democrats are re responsible two times over for pushing the republican party over to the right one with with their support of uh, corporations in 1898 and again underneath uh clinton with the help of joe biden uh and the tough on crime and the you know the 94 crime bill and three strike rules and all that kind of stuff that pushed the democrats over to the right even more pushing the republicans even further to the right um so you know they're responsible for the republican party being as awful as it is which again should tell you why i'm not a democrat why i was never a fucking democrat Let's look at some comments. Teachers against Randy. Yeah. Uh, Biden said, I'm not going to shut down the economy. And yeah. And, and that's, you know, you, you kind of see him push for that sort of stuff. And, and there is, there are some very uh, juxtaposed ideas that he throws out there. And, and again, unions and science are two things that should not be politicized. They should not be taking the side of a political party. Um, yeah, in person, virtual, in person, it makes your head spin. Yeah, that's why. I mean, kids are having a really hard time. I talked to my cousin who's who was all super stressed out about her her school year this year because it was in person, it was virtual, and you know, like when kids get used to one thing, that consistency gets taken away. It kind of throws your life into a loop. 
I've, I've experienced this several times in my life where, where when you're, when you're, you know, your, your, your stability and consistency is taken away. You're not as productive as you were. You're not physically and mentally healthy as you possibly could be. And that's what the, that's what the, the Trump administration did. And now that's what the Biden administration is pushing to do as well. Uh, but without without the rank and file pushing back, teachers would not have been vaccinated as quickly as they were, um, you know, so they would not and they, and they would not have uh, pushed on those safety protocols of better ventilation uh, and, and things like that. Um, they, they, there, there wouldn't have been any of that sort of stuff either. So th all of that was achieved, not because the Democrats decided that was the right thing to do, but because, again, public opinion was changing based on the strikes, based on the direct action of the teachers on the ground, pushing back against the unions that support the Democratic Party instead of the working class. Uh, how many justices were corporate counsels looking at you, Roberts? Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing, too, is is how many of these. Yeah. How many of these lawyers, how many of these judges have ties to corporations, have ties to the police unions, have ties to the Democratic Party? Uh, you know, so so how can you really get justice when um, when when these people are, are tied with corporations, are tied with big business, are tied with major industries across the country. You just can't. It's just not possible. It's not feasible to do that. Uh, let me pop over to the rock fans. Uh, da, da, da. We got a bunch of comments here. Uh, damn it. I, I overscrolled. There we go. Okay. Climate Rebel says, uh, my dad liked to tell the story about how strong labor saved the world by providing a quality manufacturing base to oppose fascism with. Uh, whenever union benefits are great, the general workforce also benefits from uh, wages, work conditions. So unions betray the working class. They betray the general citizenry. Yes, uh, absolutely. 100%. Um, it, it, you, I, I, think, I think when you have workers participating in the corporation and helping make decisions, it it does fight fascism. It does. It, it does make things more democratic. It does put that culture of like this is not welcome in our in our country. With with corporations acting the way they are, it it opens the doors to say, hey, maybe authoritarianism is is welcome in this country, uh, and then politicians can make more authoritarian laws as well. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Joseph I'll answer your your political question, your favorite political uh, channels uh, question in in a minute here. Uh, I uh, but I think Climate Rebel has has a couple uh, good good options there. Uh, Climate Rebel actually they did it for half a decade or so right after Nixon. Oh, they, they scrolled up, so I lost that comment. Where'd you go? I handed the handed their asses, but that's about it. They went they went along with Ronnie the Rat. <laughs> <laughs> Reagan as he crushed us. I like Ronnie the Rat Reagan. I like that nickname. Uh, Zosef says, Chris should be catching the eye of some other channels uh, I watch and do some show collaborations. I do have a couple of, uh, yeah, like, uh, Nico Nico just did my podcast. Ron's done my podcast a couple times. Uh, I, I work pretty closely with Lee Camp and Eleanor Goldfield uh, and uh, Graham Elwood's been, but I'm, I'm happy to, uh, yeah, jump on other people's shows. And uh, you mentioned Roar Media. Stevie actually from uh, uh, Redneck Economics, she's been talking about getting me on. Uh, I think it's just a matter of figuring out schedules and stuff. But yeah, I would love to jump on and, and talk about this stuff. Um, uh, that all the comment. So you guys are you guys are super sweet over on the Rock Fence. Uh, I really appreciate that. But uh, let's let's wrap things up. Uh, <laughs> couple more comments to read here my cousin a pediatrician uh says he sees possibly infected kids all the time yeah and and what's what's really funny about it is i talked to my sister and a few other folks about this is is we just don't know what's going on with kids it, the 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 opinion seems to to shift constantly on it so it's it's just crazy. So, you know, to me, I would just rather take the the safer option than than push back and forth uh, so it, it just doesn't make any fucking sense to me. 
Uh, dinner with Franklin, good to see you. Thank you for, for, for joining the stream here. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it. And, uh, and you guys help keep this, uh, keep, keep this, this train a-moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.